We have uh, already looked at the basics of uh, financing energy projects. Uh, we looked at the sources of funding, the difference between debt and equity. And now let us operationalize this in terms of understanding how much of debt and equity we should take and how do we configure in our calculations the calculations of the loan repayments. Uh, so we we'll, uh, let's take a first a simple example. If we are taking a loan, a certain amount which is your um, initially we are looking at a debt which is being paid. So that means this is the amount which is paid to us. This is the debt, and then annually we are repaying. till what is known as the duration of the loan or the tenor of the loan, NL. So what would happen is, suppose we have an interest rate which is I, we want to convert this into an equivalent amount which we are paying. So for a given interest rate I, and the duration of loan NL, let us first see how we can annualize this into an equivalent amount that we have to pay. Let us take this as a equated annual payment, which is a loan replace repayment in equated annual amounts. Of course, there could be loans where you could have different amounts being paid in different years, but it will be equivalent. We are converting it into an equivalent annual amount. So this will be very similar, it is similar to the formula that we had for the capital recovery factor and instead of D now we are going to use I which is the interest rate. So this will be the debt into I 1 plus I raised to NL divided by 1 plus I raised to NL minus 1. And this is the annualization factor that we will calculate that will be multiplied by the debt to give annually how much we are replay, repaying in the loan. So you will see for many of even the consumer durables and uh, uh, let us say a car or a high end phone, it is possible either to pay for it upfront or you can also pay in equated monthly installments. So let us calculate, for instance, I just looked at the web and I found that there is a car which whose price, overall price is 10 lakhs of rupees. And uh, for this, this is the price, there is an ex showroom price plus there are some taxes and other payments that have to be made and you, it is possible to get a loan of 90% of the x, uh, the, you know, the price, the original price that you are getting uh, from the uh, supplier. So that turns out to be, uh, that does not include the taxes and other things uh, for registration, the payment which is made. So we can get a loan of, let us say, 8 lakhs. So let us just see should the individual take the loan of 8 lakhs uh, where, or, or should, it, should the individual pay the total 10 lakhs up front. Of course, in some cases you may not have 10 lakhs to pay and then it, you, are, you have no other option but to take the loan. We need to know what is the interest rate of the loan. So I just looked at a particular website today, so it looks like for that car along the, uh, the vendor itself is giving an option to have an equated monthly installment and the interest rate on the loan is 10.5 percent. This is the interest rate, which means I is 0 0.105. The, this has to be repaid in a period of 60 months. So we want to calculate how much will be the monthly EMI, equated monthly installment. 
So, this is N L then is 5 years. So, using our formula the annualization factor, let us substitute and get annualization factor is I 1 plus I raised to N L 1 plus I raised to N L minus 1 point 1 0 5 1 point 1 0 5 raised to 5 So, if you substitute this, you will find this is equal to just calculate it, you will find it is 0 0.267, 0 0.2672. So, now the loan repayment, annual loan repayment will be 8 lakhs into 0 0.2672 comes out to be 2.14 lakhs. So, on a monthly basis this will be 2.14 into 10 raised to 5 rupees divided by 12. This is the equated monthly installment and if you work this out this will turn out to be 17,810 rupees per month. So, what is happening is that you have an option which is you pay 10 lakhs here and nothing else or we pay 2 lakhs up front and then we end up paying 2.14 lakh each year for 5 years. Now, the question is which of this is preferable? It will of course depend on what is your discount rate and how much access to capital that you have. So, let us compare. Let us say that we are taking a discount rate. Suppose the individual has a discount rate of 30 percent. In which case, what was the capital recovery factor? Capital recovery factor dn will be 0.3. You remember we had done this in the energy economics portion. This turns out to be 0.2737. And what we are now doing is we are making these 2.14 lakh payments every year. We are discounting only at the end of the year, we could we are not doing it monthly basis, we could also compound it and discount it on a monthly basis. We want to replace this by an equivalent upfront amount which will be 2.14 divided by the capital recovery factor DNL and this turns out to be 2.14 by 0.2737 which is 7.82 lakhs. Please note that this is less than the 8 lakhs that we are taking in the loan. So, with an effect we are getting a net benefit of 18,000 rupees and hence we should go for the loan. What if the discount rate is lower? Let us say the discount rate is 8 percent. So, let us recalculate. If discount rate is 8 percent, then the CRF CRF 0 0.08 5 years will be 0 0.08 1.08 raised to 5. You can calculate this and you will see that this comes out to be 0 0.2505. Now, when we look at the loan repayments, 
we are repaying 2.14 lakhs is the repayment which we are making each year. So, 2.14 for 5 years. So, that means, when we look at what is the net present value of all these repayments, that is going to be equal to the annual amount 2.14 divided by the capital recovery factor 0 0.2505. And when we calculate this, this will come out to be this is the net present value is 8.544 lakhs. Please look at this. This now is more than the initial amount of the loan taken, which was 8 lakhs. So, the net present value of the repayments is more than um, if it was a direct payment and hence we should not take the loan. So, very clearly the decision on whether to take the loan or not will depend on the discount rate that the individual has and compared that with the rate at which we are getting the, the interest rate for the loan. So, in this case since the discount rate for the individual is less than the interest rate of the loan, uh, this turns out to be the loan is effectively much costlier than actually paying this from the own individual's funds. Now, let us uh, put this together in the form of let us look at a question where we talk about a company uh, which wants to decide whether it should finance a particular energy project either through its own funds that is equity or through debt. So, let us look at there are two examples. Uh, I will just read out both the examples, explain them to you and then we will solve the first example. You can go ahead and solve the second one also. So, it is like a tutorial. The first one is there is an infrastructure company which is planning to invest in a wind farm of a rating of 56 uh, megawatt. So, a rating is 56 megawatt. We are given that the capital cost is of the order of 340 crores. And this is a reasonable, this is typically the order of magnitude of the capital costs of wind machines, grid connected. Uh, the wind farm has a preferential tariff for wind based electricity at 4 rupees 50 paisa per kilowatt hour and then there is an annual operation and maintenance cost of 45 paisa per kilowatt hour. And so, this ONM cost will be multiplied by the annual generation. We are told that the life of the plant is 25 years and the capacity factor is 30 percent. So, we know how much generation. We want to calculate the internal rate of return first if we just do this on our own and then if debt is available at 11 percent interest and a tenor of 10 years, calculate the internal rate of return IRR on the equity for a debt equity ratio of 50-50 and 7030. And the question is how should the company finance the plant? So, that is that is the um, this is the first problem. Second problem is uh, now for a gas turbine based plant an independent power plant proposing a 250 megawatt gas based combined cycle power plant in Maharashtra. Direct capital cost for the gas turbine is given to you 880 crores including all the you know the during the construction there is some interest during construction and escalation. So, it is a total overnight it is called an overnight cost which is as if if you can build the plant overnight then what would it cost you. Uh, the heat rate is given. So, based on the heat rate we can calculate how much is the fuel which will be required. Uh, the heat rate should be this should be two, 2000 kilocalories. Uh, per uh, kilowatt hour and uh, using that we should be able to calculate the calorific value of the natural gas which is the calorific value is given and the price is given. So, we can know how much natural gas is used um, for generation. Fixed the costs are shown as a fixed operation and maintenance cost and a variable operation maintenance cost. Life is given as 25 years. 
PLF is 70 percent and uh, the um, power purchase agreement has a purchase rate of 3 rupees 50, calculate the internal rate of return and if debt is available at 12 percent and for 10 years, again to look at uh, debt to equity ratio, two debt equity ratios 50-50 and 70-30. So you can try both these problems. We will take a look at the first problem, which is the, we have a wind farm. Uh, if we write it down, this is a wind farm rating is given to us as 56 megawatt and the capital cost or the C0 which we were talking of is rupees 340 crores. We are also told that the life is 25 years and we have the um, uh, preferential tariff of rupees 450 per kilowatt hour. We have this is the tariff, this is how much we will be paid and the capacity factor is 30 percent. This is all the relevant data and then we have that annual ONM, ONM cost is variable. It depends on the amount of generation and it is given to you as 45 rupees 40.45 or 45 paise per kilowatt hour of generation. So, first of all, let us first calculate, this is all the data, let us first calculate how much is the generation from the wind turbine, uh, wind plant. So, if we look at this, this is, uh, we are told that the capacity factor is 30 percent. Capacity factor is the actual generation divided by the maximum possible generation. So, the actual generation, actual annual generation is going to be 0.3 into 56 megawatt into 24 into 365 or this is 8760 hours per year. This answer will be in megawatt hours. So, if you look at, if you do this number, you will find that we get a number which is, this comes out to be 14,000, uh, sorry, 147,168 megawatt hours. So, what will be the total revenue each year? Net revenue will be the tariff which we are getting and we are subtracting from that whatever is the operation and maintenance cost. So, that means this will be 147168 megawatt hour into 4.5 minus 0.45 into 1 megawatt hour is 10 raised to 3 kilowatt hour. This will be in rupees. If we want to get this number, since we are talking in crores, let us get this in crores. So, 1 lakh is 10 raised to 5, 1 crore will be 10 raised to 7. We can divide this by 10 raised to 7 and this will become 10 raised to Four, and if you see this one, two, three, four, it will be 14.7 into 4.05. Now, of course, we have rounded off some decimal places, but you can <coughs> look at this and you will get this turns out to be 59.6 crores. Uh, 
Okay, so you can check this, and this is the amount that will be there. So in the if we look at what happens here, we are paying three forty crores. And we are getting fifty nine point six crores every year for a total life period n is equal to twenty five years. So <clears throat> the question is: Is the uh, we are uh, we want to calculate? what is the internal rate of return internal rate of return and uh, we want to calculate that so this is going to be this will be where we are putting uh, the in c0 is 340 will be equal to 59.6 into we was looking at this as r 1 plus r raised to n 1 plus r raised to n minus 1 so look at the so this is r can be written as 59.6 by 340 1 minus so we can uh, take this and we can do the calculation we can assume a certain value of r and then cross check and get what is the rate of return that we are getting so let us see uh, let's just use a spreadsheet if you are using uh, an open office or you are using excel uh, we can uh, let's create a new spread new sheet okay so uh, let us see we are doing 59.6 divided by 340 and that is that comes out to be 0.1726 1725 0.1725 into 1 minus 1 plus r raised to n where n is 25 so let us put um, let's calculate let's take let's take a value of let's start with the starting value of 0.2 if r is 0.2 we are getting the uh, 1 plus r is going to be 1.2 and we take one, this 1 point if we take this and put 1.2 raise to 25 and that's 95 point 39 uh, we can do 1 minus 1 by this so that's a bracketed term that turns out to be if we look at this so r if we start with r is equal to 0.2 we get r the next value of r which we are getting is 1.175 and to 1 minus 0.989 and uh, sorry this is r is 1.175 into 0.989 that's what we have to do this is the bracketed term so we will get this as now what we can do is we can convert uh, so this uh, <coughs> this value now can be taken as we can take this as 0.1735 as the new value of r r is 0.173 and then we can multiply uh, this is going to be now we can copy these cells we can just copy them 
and this so we get this and then this is going to be this value into 0.98 so now this is coming to the next value of r uh, we get this as the new value of r comes out to be 0.173 so it's fairly within so it's basically we are getting a this uh, rate of internal rate of return of 17.3 percent which is a reasonable uh, amount that we are getting now we go back to that question which we were trying to solve and uh, if you see in this the next question says that uh, assuming a life of 25 calculate the internal rate of return we've already calculated that if debt is available at 11 percent interest and a tenor of 10 years calculate the internal rate of return on the equity uh, so now what happens is that we are having a debt uh, which is available to us at 11 percent so this is i is 11 percent that means i is 0.11 the tenor is 10 years that means nl is 10 so i can calculate the annualization factor as 0.11 1.11 raised to 10, 1.11 raised to 10 minus 1 and if you substitute this, this comes out to be 0.1698. Now we are, let us look at the first case where we have 340 crores and we are saying debt equity ratio is 0.5. So, fraction of that is 0.5, which means the total loan that we take is 170 crores. If we are taking a loan of 170 crores, how much will we be repaying annually, annual loan repayment? 170 into 0.1698 and you can calculate this, this comes out to be 28.87 crores. So now what happens to our stream of flow cash flows? Now we are only paying 170 crores of equity and in each year, in the first 10 years, we are getting the, you remember we were getting 59.6 crores each year. Now we have to pay from that revenue, the annual revenue of 59.6, we have to repay the loan. So we have to do 59.6 minus 28.87 and this comes out to be 30.7 approximately. So when we look at this situation, we will get now each year first 7, 10 years we are getting 30.7 and then from the 11th year onwards we are getting 59.6 till 25 years. So when we write the internal rate of return we on the equity we are trying to balance it and get the rate of return where 170 is equal to 30.7. We will get this as sum of, in each case, this will be 30.7, 1 plus r raised to k, k is equal to 1 to 10. This is the first 10 years where we are paying, a re, re, we are repaying the loan and from the 11th year onwards, k is equal to 11 to 25, this is 
this will be 59.6 divided by 1 plus r raised to k. So, in the similar fashion that we had done the uh, other calculation, we have to start with a trial value of r and find out what is the internal rate of return on the equity. Now, if this internal rate of return, we have to compare that with the return that we had got earlier and if it is higher than that 17.3 percent, I think we had got, uh, if it is higher than that, it makes sense for us to go with the loan. If it is not, then we should not, uh, we should not go for that. Of course, it also depends on whether we have 340 crores uh, to spend. If we do not, then uh, as long as this is uh, the rate of return on this is uh, this the, is positive and is more than our minimum rate of return, then we should go for it. Uh, so, in order to calculate this, let us again let us just see a simple calculation with Excel. So, if you look at this, we have already drawn this uh, Excel sheet. So, we are talking about a debt fraction of 0.5, so 340 into 0.5 giving us 170 with the loan uh, at an interest rate of 11 percent uh, for 10 years. In the first year, we will have uh, 30.7, um, 30.7 crores we said was the net uh, input and uh, this is this is cash flow is there if you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years. After the 10th year from the 11th year onwards it is 59.6 crores and this goes on till 25 years. Each year what we have done is we have divided we will presume we will take an uh, assumed value of r. So, let us say if we take 30 percent 0.3, then in the first year we will just divide by 1 plus r which is 1.3, second year 1.3 squared, 1 plus r squared, 1 plus r cubed and so on and this is in the last year this will be 1 plus r raised to 25. So, if we look at this, this is what we have done and then we have divided this, this number by the denominator and we have calculated it for each year and then we have summed up all of this. So, we sum up all the cash flows which are the benefit streams and then we subtract this is the equity which we are paying minus 170 crores. So, we take the total sum of this and subtract from that the initial out payment and so you will see the net present value is negative. So, obviously, we will not have a high uh, 30 percent is too high a debt fraction. Let us reduce this and see try it out with 20 percent and see what happens. You see now that we are getting something which is 174 crores overall net present value, so it is positive. So, the, uh, the fraction that we are getting is now getting, we are getting um, uh, the, uh, our rate of return is going to be 20 percent or more. We can try with, uh, let us change this to 0.22. Uh, let us change it to 0 0.2, 0 0.22 and you see it 0.22 it is negative, we can bracket it even further. Let us take 0 0.21, 0 0.21 is also negative, so it is more like 0 0.2, 0 0.205 negative. So, we can get it in, uh, within an accuracy of 0 0.201 is positive, 0 0.202 is also positive. So, 20.2, uh, 0 0.203, 20.
So you see it's between 20.3 and 20.4, uh, can, we can just say that this is 20.3% is, is the rate of return. And um, of course, this is higher than the value that we got from the, um, in the case where we are not taking the uh, debt, uh, we were getting 17.3% return uh, on our equity. So it is better that we take the loan. Uh, what if we increase the loan fraction and take it as 70-30? When we take this as 70-30, what will happen is that the um, amount that we have to repay increases and but the initial uh, amount instead of 170 crores now the equity is only 102 crores but in the first 10 years we are getting 19.19 crores instead of the earlier value that we had got of 30.7 crores with the result that you can see now that actually the interest, the rate of return will increase. Let's try with 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is negative. 0 0.25. 0 0.24. Is also negative. So you see it's now it's come to we, earlier it was 20 percent now we are getting 23 percent. So obviously from uh, the point of view of the company it is uh, viable to go for a higher debt equity ratio. Of course there will be a maximum debt equity ratio which the uh, uh, financing institution will give you. So but if you can go up to 70 and 30 in this case and that is the way in which we can calculate. So please look at what we have done. We first calculated in case we did not take the loan what will be our rate of return and, and the internal rate of return. Then we for the loan based on the terms of the loan we calculated how much will be the loan repayment then adjusted in the years when we are repaying the loan the rev from the revenue stream we subtracted that amount and then built up the cash flow streams and then calculated uh, the internal rate of return on the equity. We tried with the two different debt fractions and the debt fraction that gives us a higher rate of return on the equity is the fraction that we would choose. In this particular case, we can even without doing the numbers, we could have estimated what would happen because uh, on the equity we are getting a rate of return of 17 percent uh, and for the loan we are only paying 11 percent. So it would naturally make sense for us to maximize the equity. There could be other situations where it will not be so obvious and we would need to do the detailed calculation. With this we complete the portion that uh, we have done on energy financing and I would suggest that you solve the second problem um, which is given in the tutorial in a similar fashion and make sure that you yourself can do all these numbers.